was disciplined. He ate only honey and locust and, wo and wore a garment of ca camel hair. He was a real rugged, rough cat. You understand? And the men that follow him were rugged, rough cats too. But the problem is John the Baptist didn't follow Christ. All right, Shalom. This is Harawan Ban Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say Kyle Halayim, La Yahweh, Ba Hashim Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashim, Harakak Wadash, Ma'amah. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. And Shalom to you, Akim, Nakwati, my children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. All right. Um, this is going to be a quick lesson, <clears throat> just an introduction, because I, I got a lot on my spirit I want to talk about with this topic and uh what i hope is that you can be uh, edified and have more clarity on who john the baptist was all right and his purpose uh because you got a lot of demons that are going off and they're discrediting the uh the former prophets the prophets of old discrediting um john when the scriptures speak differently right and what it spoke about with your house shot so it's a lot to talk about so i made it to put it in about two or three videos all right so so with this video i want to make this more of an introduction okay in the spirit so let's start with the prophecy of john all right one of the prophecies of john all right so his name meant uh yakanan which would mean um uh, uh God is gracious, all right. The Most High is gracious, so that he was a symbol. He was symbolic of the Lord giving grace to Israel. What's grace? Grace is a gift that's given to you, even when you don't deserve it, all right. And the gift He's given us is exemption from judgment, called and it's called salvation, and it's truth. And Yahweh shot, all right. So He gave gave us His Son, even though even though we didn't deserve Him. Okay, and salvation. So, John is a representation of that, that introduction. He's the forerunner of Yahweh Shai. All right. During the time when there was heavy persecution on the children of Israel. Around the time John and Yahweh Shai was born. All right. Or they were, they were uh, in their adolescent age. Okay. I think Yahweh was born around 4 BCE, and John was born a little earlier, a little, a little bit earlier. But then you had, uh, um, around that time, you had a lot of persecution upon Israel because they didn't want us to have a king, all right? And I may go into that into another lesson, but they didn't want us to have a king, okay? And that's what the whole thing was about. They wanted us to be peasants up under them, up under the Roman Empire and the Herodian dynasty, spoken of in Revelations chapter 12. All right. So right here you have uh, Isaiah 40 and 1. Um, it says, comfort ye my people. That's the prophecy of Isaiah. All right. Now it says, uh, comfort ye my people. Say if you howl, all right. All right, it says, Speak ye comfort, comfort, comfortably to your Rashalom and cry unto her. And that's what we're supposed to do today, moving in that same spirit of Isaiah. Now, when John was on the scene, what they would do is they would read from the prophecies of Isaiah, all right, and Jeremiah. And a lot of the prophets at that time, they weren't going off, um, you know, like John, you know. Um, they believed the prophecies, so that's the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the scriptures say, the spirit of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy. All right, and uh, Yakanan, what he would do is, he would tell the people about the prophecies of the Lord, and he read. John would read from this scripture. He would read from this scripture in Isaiah, and he went to what they would call the Essenes. All right, they would call the Essenes because at that time. You had, um, who was it? You had four, I think it was the Essenes, the Galileans, 
the Sadducees and the Pharisees. All right. The Essenes, the Galileans, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees. The Pharisees kept the law, but they were um they, they were going off saying you had to be circumcised to be delivered. They had a lot of discrepancies in their beliefs, and it, and a lot of them didn't understand the prophecies. They thought that Yahweh was going against Moses, you know the prophet the the um the old covenant when Yahweh was greater than Moses. You know it was a step forward for us as a nation um, the Sadducees they believed in the Greek mindset to where they didn't believe really in the the, the, the uh, spirit world of reincarnation and such but they believed in keeping the law you know so they had some paganism that crept up in there with their mindset um, you had the Essenes they were all about the prophecies all right and establishing uh, baptism, meaning repentance, all right, uh, before the Day of Judgment. So they was all about that. So they knew about the Day of Judgment. But just like all the other prophets and the men of the Lord, they thought it was going to happen back then, all right? When they asked the Lord, are you going to establish the kingdom now? He said no. You know, he had to tell them, teach them that, all right? So they believed it was going to happen when Yahweh showed up, just like we probably would if we were sitting right there looking at him. We saw Yahweh Shai, we'd think this is it. But um, that's why Yahweh Shai had to give them more understanding. All right? Now, um, it's a lot, so I'm going to go, just bear with me, I'm going to, uh, you know, get, break it down for you, Yahweh Shai. So, um, John the Revelator, I mean, so like a John the Baptist, he was part of those Essenes, all right? And the Essenes, they dealt with baptism, which was uh, part of our customs going all the way back to the time of Moses. They would use nitri at, at such certain times of water, all right, baptism. But that didn't make us clean spiritually, all right? So people would go sin and then go wash again, and they couldn't cleanse those sins, all right? So the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is set up to cleanse our heart, our minds, with the spirit of the water, which would be the baptism, all right, fire. So, all right, so now the Essenes, they believed in that. So that's why they went out to the desert. They was out in the wilderness, in the desert. And even at that time, a lot of uh, prophets, spiritual men, they would go out into the desert or the wilderness of Judea um, to find, you know, to be alone with the Lord. Or that, I forgot what they would call it, solitude, all right, just like the monks do. So that's the way we are today, you know. So, um, and the same thing with Moses. The same thing with King David. He went into these, uh, the same wilderness that that John was in, all right? So um, I'll bring that out in this lesson, Yahweh right All right, so let's get into it. So um, so this, this was where it was established at, man. So this is a prophecy that came to pass, man. This prophecy came to pass. All right. Um, so now it says here, Isaiah 40 and 1, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith the Lord. How, we, how do we comfort each other? All right. And that's what John was doing. He was comforting them with the prophecies. Um, and Isaiah was doing that too. Uh, so I can. All right, I'm gonna get this preset real quick. This is First Thessalonians four and eighteen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. All right, so that's what John would do. He would read from the scriptures. You know, um, he read the book of Isaiah just like Yahweh did. The prophecies about. Um, himself, John, and also the prophecies about uh, Yahweh Shai. All right, so um, comfort ye my my people. So speak the words to our to our people. Because you had the Pharisees, a lot of them, and the, and the Sadducees, a lot of them were corrupted by the Roman Empire. All right, they, they only allowed us to be called priests. They didn't allow us to be called kings. 
And that's why they went after Yahweh Shai, because they said the king is born. All right? And they, they didn't want us having any crowns because that would give us sovereignty. And any sovereignty, um, uh, any any nation that has a king, they would basically be a sovereign nation. And with that, they can make their own rules. And the Roman Empire wanted us to be under them. All right? So, um, that's right, let me keep reading. So, it says what? Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, man. And that's what John showed up to do. He was showing up to find those that were in it, that lined up and they were looking for the prophecies to happen of Yahweh Shah showing up that, that Moses spoke of. You know, Moses spoke of a prophet that was going to show up, you know, of our nation. And when Yahweh Shah showed up, the Most High said, Hear ye him, calling him the priest. The high, he's the true high priest, Yahweh Shah. But before that, he was just known as a commoner, you know, amongst the Roman Empire. But Yahweh showed up and said, this is the one to listen to. He has the message for you. All right. So, um, so now, that's why John, that's why the scriptures say that. Um, let me get this real quick. All right. This is Luke 3 and uh, 2. All right. Now, um. It says, Annas and Caiaphas, being high priests, the word of Yahweh came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. All right, so it came unto John. See, they, they, so if you want to know what John was doing out in that wilderness, he was living out there. And he went out there to get away from the corruption of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the, the, the high priests. All right, and he went out there to get away from all of that. And, um, and it's deep, man. Because you got people saying, why did he wear camel's hair? Well, he wore camel's hair because he was very intelligent. The Lord gave him the spirit and understanding. Knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. You know, I asked my children this last night. If you went to uh, the north in the cold or at night in the desert, it gets what? Cold. So what would you wear? Buffalo covering right foot. But what would you wear? In, would you wear that in the desert? See, camel's hair could be worn in the desert and in the winter. All right, it's perfect um, thermo, what do we call that? You know, filtration, where it can cool the body perfectly and it can also heat up the body perfectly. It's just perfect. You can look it up, man. Camel's hair, what it does for the body. That's why John wore camel's hair, all right? He was living in the desert. He was out in the desert. And uh, he didn't wear fancy clothing like IUIC be wearing silk and shit. That shit will melt on you. You know, and it won't keep you warm. So that's what the Lord was like. What came you out to see? A man wearing soft raiment? No, nah, I mean, he living in the wilderness. He's a smart man. He was a wild man. Like, uh, intelligent, but I'm living amongst the wild nature. And that's the way the Lord wants us to understand life, understand the herbs. And he was eating honey, honey and locusts. Honey is for healing and it, it, it lightens the mind. And, you know, wakes you up, fights bacteria, and uh, especially the honeycomb. I'm sure he was eating that too. You know, and uh, locust protein and vegetables in it. You know, all kind of uh, herbs and uh, minerals, vitamins. So, sheesh, you want to hang with him instead of the other ones, man. That was corrupt. All right, John was a survivor, <laughs> living in the desert, the wilderness. But um, it's funny because, let me just get to the scriptures first before I go there. All right, this is Luke 3, and eight, uh, three. and so this is John, Yachanan, the son of Ze Zacharias, who was born the same way Yahweh was born, with the Holy Spirit upon him, all right? That's the Immaculate Conception, the Immaculate uh, the the miracle of that the, the birth is that the Most High prophesied it and it came to pass. The Most High had his men prophesy, his voice prophesy, and he brought his words to pass right on time. All right, that's the immaculate, the miracle of the birth of Yahushua. 
that the Most High spoke it from the beginning and it came to pass. So, it says here, so John came into his all the country about Jordan, preaching the word, the baptism. So he came out of the wilderness. Watch this, the baptism of repentance. Right? It says Zechariah in the wilderness in the desert, and he came into all the country of Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance. All right, saying saying repent, meaning to turn back to Yahweh because the judgment was coming, and it was. It was. Uh, but it was a foundation that was going to be set for a, a, a future judgment, all right? At that time, the Lord, Yahweh came to, to warn our people that Titus and Vespasian was about to show up in 70 AD, and we were going to, uh, there was going to be a falling away first, all right? And then the mystery of iniquity, iniquity was going to be revealed in these days when, when the Spirit of the Lord is upon the earth, the Spirit of truth. And it was going to start again with John who's going to move in that same spirit of Elijah to return the hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children. So to turn the elders to us and us to the elders, man. It's just that clear. All right, so it says here, as it is, and, and he came into all the country of Jordan Preaching the baptism of repentance for remission of sins, man. Not just saying you um, you sacrifice a lamb and then that's it. No, we had to be cleansed, man. So John was saying, yo, you got to repent. You got to turn back from your, your ways. Not just standing in a corrupt way and then um, just killing a, a sacrifice and that's it. You know, John was teaching different. He was teaching to pull away from the Roman Empire. And the corruptness of the wicked Sadducees, uh, Sadducees and uh, Pharisees, because a lot of them weren't wicked, a lot of them was righteous. All right, so John set up his own amongst the Essenes, which the Essenes again they believed in more so prophecy, and you had the Galileans; they were more like revolutionary. They was a lot of Judeans, man, you know, and that's why the scriptures say that uh, Judah, thy hand should be in the neck of thy enemy. Because they're the ones that are going to jump off this so-called uh, race war uh, that, that may come soon, so-called Negroes. They got that revolutionary spirit, just like the so-called Black Panthers, you know. But amongst our people in Galilee, they were called Galileans, all right? Um, and also, Yahweh was called a Galilean, you know? So John was called in the scene. It's a difference. All right. So he was part of the establishment out in the wilderness where uh, the scripture said to make straight the paths. All right. So he was setting up a camp, basically, man. But um, in, in the right understanding, you we will understand today that it really meant uh, it had to happen back then. But today it was it's spiritual. All right. Establishing it in the wilderness, which is this damn world, America. You know, he said, make way his past. Let's get to it. It says, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet. See, John was reading from this same book, Isaiah 40, that we're about to read. Uh, saying, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. See, so the Yahweh, it says what? Um, watch this. Where is it at? Um, there you go. Verse 2. Annas Caiaphas being the high priest, the word of Yahweh came unto John, man, telling him that he's the one of that prophecy. So what the hell is wrong with these ISUPK guys, man? And the dude, um, La'a Award, the one that has no light, the guy from Mississippi. They discrediting uh, John, man. Discrediting Abba Bibbins. All right. Um, by discrediting Abba Bibbins, you're discrediting the John, period. Because he was most likely, according to the prophecy, Abba Bibbins, man. Whoever likes it or not. 
You got to be spiritual to understand it. All right, so the, the, the Spirit of the Lord came unto John the same way the Spirit came unto Elijah, the same way the Spirit came unto um, Ezekiel, you know, all the prophets and Isaiah in the wilderness, telling him out there to prepare this way. He's like, yo, you the one. You the one out here in the wilderness, you the one. Think about that. You out there in the wilderness with the Essenes or, you know, and then the, the spirit come to you and tell you that you the one that's going to do it. And you start to move in that spirit of Elijah, preparing the way. Man, call like me about Shemel Shai. That's, that's the miracle. All right. As it is written in the books of, book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, to you it was a prophecy saying the voice of the one crying in the wilderness in the deserts of the uh, judean uh desert all right also known as the uh, judean uh hills prepare ye the way of the lord make his path straight all right so now the way of the lord means the righteous path and make his path straight just means righteous or right you know correct him Okay, make all the paths, get everything lined up correctly, man. Get the, the men, women, and children in order and prepared for your house shot. That's what we're doing today. All right. Um, it says, every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight. See that? The crooked. And that was a lot, that's what a lot of the Pharisees were doing. And the Sadducees, they were crooked. They started following the ways of the Romans, making deals with the Roman Empire, because they couldn't be called kings. They had to be on the status of priests. And then what the, what the Roman Empire did, they removed a lot of those uh, natural-born kings that had, later, a lot of them was called priests. They removed them and installed puppets, all right? You know, so... And that, that that really started with uh, Pompeii, uh, 60, around 65 8, uh, BC, with the Roman Empire. Man, they wouldn't allow us to be called kings anymore. They only allow us to be called priests. And that later they removed the priests and they established puppets. So John was like, "Yo, I gotta get away from that, man." And the, the Essenes as well, uh, from what I've read in the past. So the Galileans, they were more revolutionary, but let's get into it. It says, um, and all flesh shall, shall see the salvation of Yahweh, right? right. So even the wicked is going to see um, Yahweh Shai. Even, you know, even back then, they saw him. The Roman Empire saw him, and two-thirds saw him, and the elect saw Yahweh Shai. But in these times, Revelations 1 and 7 says, Every eye shall see him. So, same thing. But even more, the whole world going to see it this time. Verse 7. Then said he to the multitude that came forth. See, a lot of those were the, the wicked Sadducees and, and Pharisees that showed up. You know? And um, they didn't believe in the prophecies. All right? So, John knew that. And he said, Yo... So then said he unto the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, see, they thought just according to the customs, like, yeah, you gonna baptize us? And John was like, nah, man, this is about repentance, man. You know? It's different. It says, who warned you? He said, O generation of vipers, called them a bunch of snakes. Just like today, man. Um, IUIC, ISUBK. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? All right? Like, who who you get the prophecy from? What you doing here? That's the only one that could take part in this re repentance, this water, this baptism. Because the judgment day is coming. And he was warning them about that. He was all about prophecy. He was, The spirit of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy. So how are these camps, like ISUBK, saying that John was wicked? I'm going to show that in the next video, but this video is focused on 
John wearing camel's hair and being in the wilderness, the voice in the wilderness. Yeah, dude, this dude just said, yeah, he was rough. It's more than that. It's not about that. Elijah was rough too. You know, he had a bunch of hair. And he lived in the wilderness of of Thisbe, which we call that's why he called him a Tishbite. All right. So it wasn't about that. It was about his intelligence today. Imagine if today the way John would be thinking in the society about his covering, about um, blending in. That's what a ninja would do. A ninja, they know how to blend in right in plain sight and mold into the society. See, he he was, was sharp to go out into the desert and wear camel's hair. When these idiots was probably laughing at him, wearing silk and all that. You know, but he was prepared for the weather and different for the environment he was in. That's a smart uh, uh, man. So it says, "Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance." Man, see, they gotta be worthy of it. They they was going off still, man. You know, and being not. And begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father, saying, yeah, we Israelites, right? So we're going back to the custom. Are you going to clean us and give us, dunk us in the water, you know? So we could be washed. Are we Israelites? But he was like, no, nah, this is different. You know, you know, you got to be Israelite, but not all Israel are going to be saved, all right? It's about salvation. The first, being the first fruits. For I say unto you that Yahweh is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. All right, and now the axe is laid into the root of the trees. So the Lord was, was starting from the, the root, the foundation. It was cutting them, cutting them off, tra uh, trimming the hedges, preparing for today. He was cutting them out, saying, yo, just like he said when he shows up, he's going to push some to the left and some to the right. That's what he was doing back then. I had the judgment. Um, every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, man. I Meaning they're going to be, um, have a judgment unto the day of destruction. All right. That's, that's, that. Meaning they were wicked back then. They're going to be wicked now. That's right. But the spirit of the prophet is subject unto the prophet, and the spirit of the wicked is subject to be wicked. So let's keep going. Um, let's get back to. So that's the prophecy spoken of to John in the wilderness of the Judean hills from Yahweh, man, about himself spoken of in this scripture I'm going to read right here. So this is um, Isaiah 40 and 1. Comfort ye. Comfort ye my people, saith Yahweh. And that's what John did. He comforted his people, the Lord's people, Israelites, with the prophecies. All right? So reading Isaiah. And a lot of the, the Sadducees, Pharisees, and a lot of revolutionaries that were in Galilee, they weren't doing that. They weren't following the prophecy. And that's, what, that's why Yahweh was dealing with John, because he was dealing with the spirit of prophecy. He knew about Yahweh showing up. He was waiting for it. And that's why the Lord called us sheep having no shepherd. Not saying all Israel, yeah, we ain't have a shepherd. But he was saying his sheep, that's the focus. Who is his sheep? The ones that were waiting for him. And the ones that didn't know about him that he came to wake up, of course. But there's a lot of them that were waiting on the prophecy of the Lord. That's why when um, people like Philip, um, not, not Philip, what was his name, Andrew, which is the, the older brother of Peter, when he first saw Yahweh Shai, you know, all these people were waiting on Yahweh Shai. They, you know, they knew about the prophecies. All right. So um, now let's keep going. So they were his sheep, but we didn't have our shepherd yet until Yahweh Shai showed up. So verse two: Speak ye comfortably, comfortably to Jerusalem. All right, to, to the elect, Yerushalayim, the city of peace, which today is called the elect. 
and cry unto her that her welfare, her warfare is accomplished, man. I mean, it's about to send Yahawashai and uh, all the prophecies were about to be fulfilled all up until Yahawashai. All right, he said to all be fulfilled. And Yahawashai fulfilled those prophecies and he's about to continue to fulfill them even today. All right, but he fulfilled it all up until that point which the ancient prophets prophesied about about him showing up, the pro, you know, the, the prophet among our people. It says that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of Yahweh's hand double for all her sins, man. So we already, according to the book of Daniel, chapter nine and twenty-nine, um, we received that that judgment uh, double. You know. So this is the this is the outro of it, but he was still saying, "Yo, there's gonna be a falling away first, completely." All right, we went into slavery under the Babylonian Empire. It, um, then the temple was rebuilt. And then it uh, it fell again under the Roman Empire, and now it's about to be now it's being rebuilt. All right, so that's twice. It says here. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahweh, right? And now the Lord said, if we see that today, if you say low here or low there, don't go and follow him. See, back then, this, this prophecy would fit with John. You, you do that now, you're going to meet some, some weirdo, you know. But the wilderness he's talking about today is the world, all right? And especially America, the desert. Okay, so if somebody say, hey, come out here to Las Vegas to <laughs> meet me in the desert, don't go. You know, so the, the Lord is saying um, it's going to be different now. So the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, so he's that voice, all right? And the voice we know, I ain't got to get it, it's in Baruch, but the voice is the prophets, all right? His voices are the prophets. Excuse me. The voice of him that cried from the wilderness or in the desert. And John lived that prophecy out. He was literally out in the desert. But in these times, Abba Bivens, he played that part. He was the first established one to, to be speaking of prophecy and the, the tribes coming back together. He's moving in that same spirit, opposite of the commandment keepers. You see the, see the point? The voice of him that cried from the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahweh. See, Elijah, um, John the Baptist, Abba Bibbins all had the spirit of prophecy. It says, What? Prepare ye the way of Yahweh, man. So he was the forerunner of Yahweh Shah. That's just it. And when he said, um, I must decrease. And he must increase. What he meant by that was the um, uh, same thing Paul said. Um, I have finished my course. You know, henceforth is laid up a crown for me. And that's what John knew. So he said, yo, I must decrease and he's going to increase me. You know, I'm done with my work and he's going to continue on for eternity. That's what he meant. I must increase. I must decrease and he must increase me. And I'm done. And he's going to continue from here. That's simple. Not saying I went off, what I was teaching was off, like ISUPK said. And um, he's going to increase now with the truth. No, that's not it. He was teaching the truth and the prophecies and everything of Yahweh Shai up to that point. It's all the scriptures say all the prophets prophesied up until John. So they all prophesied about Yahweh Shai all the way up until John. After that, that was it. There's no more need to prophesy about him no more to that point of crucifixion and showing, you know. So, uh, you know, so let's keep, let's keep going. It says, uh, speak ye comfortably. The voice, verse three, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, man, Yahweh, make straight in the desert a highway for our God, man. And then he say that to Moses, 
You see that? Didn't he say that to Abraham? Didn't he say that to Jacob? Go out into the desert? To John, man. Go out into solitude. Get away from all the people so I can talk to you. And John did that. And what everybody would do is they would come out to be baptized to him in the desert. Out there. Get away from everybody. All right. And uh, King David did the same thing. Let me get, let me uh, deal with that real quick. All right. Now this is David, King David, when he was running, fleeing from Saul, and he ran into the same wilderness, the, the the Judean hills. All right, right near the Dead Sea. And uh, you have three major places where they say it's uninhabitable, but we know the Lord can make a way out of nowhere, literally, out of, even out of a desert. But um, there were places to be inhabited, even the Qumran temp, uh, caves, man, where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, which was so-called established by the uh, Essenes, which John was in the scene. So the Qumran temple uh, caves where they found the scriptures, even Isaiah, and, you know, the Old Testament written in uh, Greek, Aramaic, and Hebrew. All right, Paleo Hebrew, Lashwan Kodash. And every time it got to the Most High's name, you can check it out for yourself in the, uh, I think it's the Dead Sea Scrolls, correct? Um, you'll see everywhere it says the Most High's name is written in Paleo Hebrew. Even if it's written in Greek and then it gets to his name, it's going to be Paleo Hebrew. All right, Lashwan Kodash. So the Qumram temples, is, the caves is over there as well. All right? So. It can definitely be inhabited in the deserts. I'm going to get a picture of it while I read this for you real quick. All right, so this is the area, man. You know? Look at that. Beautiful. All right, so he told him to meet him out there. That's where, that's where John was at. The desert where Yahweh Shah resisted Satan. See, even Yahweh Shah was out there in the same wilderness, man. The same desert. So... If you, you know, I'm trying to give help with the understanding of why John was out there in the desert, why he was out in the wilderness, why he was wearing, why was he wearing camel's hair, you know? Why was he away from everybody? Because a real king has to know how to uh, be away from people and to be around people, you know? Not begging people to leave, not begging them to stay. And to be able to go into solitude is where you'll find uh, God within yourself so first samuel's 23 and 13 this is when king david ran into the same desert so they was they our people knew about it that it was a safe haven out there a retreat get away you know get away from everybody first samuel's 23 and 13 then david and his men which were about 600 arose and departed out of Ke keila whatever and went whithersoever they could go and it was told Saul that David was escaped from Kailah, and he forbear to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds. See that? So they set up strongholds out there. And our people knew that, uh, you know, because King David was around from what? Um, I think 1011 BC. That was at the Saul. All the way up until uh, 970 BC. All right. So this was this prophecy goes this this happened this history goes way back then. So our people knew about that. Reading Samuel. All right, the prophet Samuel all up until John. And went. All right. So now, so they ran escaped from Kela, and he forbear to go forth. Check this out. And David abode. In the wilderness, in the desert, in strongholds, and remain in a mountain, in the wilderness of Ziph, the desert of Ziph. See, let me get that. All right, so this is where David was at. Right around here. All right. So he was in the desert of Ziph. Let's see what it says. There you go. That's where King David was at, hiding from Saul. That's where John was at in these areas, you know. So it says, uh, in the desert of Ziph, and Saul sought him every day, but Yahweh delivered him not into his hand, see. 
And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life, and David was in the wilderness of Ziph, of Ziph in a wood. So he was hiding in the woods out there too. See, it's not just a desert. It's also called the hills of Judea. And you got the trees out here too. See, look, it says right here, wilderness of Ziph. So it's a desert, and they got the woods out here. This is where King David was hiding. So it's a wide open land where you can get away from everybody. All right? And that's what he called John out there too, where the Essenes were at, away from everybody, away from the taxes, taxation and all of that, that the Herodians, uh, I think it was Archelaus, he, um, and uh, Antipas, uh, were, uh, you know, pushing at that time, right, under the Roman Empire. So now, uh, where was that? Let's get one more. So that's Ziph, right? So there's a lot of deserts out there, places west to, to abode at. But they'll tell you, Esau will tell you that there was nowhere to live out there, if you look it up. So they'll make you think John was a wild man. Well, he wasn't, man. John would be the person you want to hang around. He was waiting on your house shy. He was, he was surviving, eating honey. He just wanted to stay away from all the weirdos. Just like we do today. We try to stay away from the world. So this is um, First Samuel 24 and 1, still with King David fleeing from Saul in the same wilderness, an area of where John was um, establishing the mindset and repentance and calling the, 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 the people, of the, the followers of prophecy, calling them together to establish that for Yahweh all right? Um, that's why when Yahweh Shah showed up, the ones that were with John, he told them to stop following him now and follow them, follow Yahweh Shah. They said, where are you going, Lord? You going to a cave? I mean, Yahweh Shah said, I sleep in the caves. So they left from John, and they went to go follow him. You see that? So John had people with him. He had a whole congregation with him. All right, 1 Samuel 24 and 1. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, "Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi." The wilderness of En Gedi. Let's see that. All right, this is the wilderness of En Gedi, and this is where King David was uh, uh, hiding. That look at that, it's beautiful out there, man. Whew. All right, it's, it's a desert, but it's, it's nice, especially if you deal with the Lord, man. All right, I'm doing freezing up, of course. All right, look at that. And Getty, Israel. This would King David was at the same area um, where it said he was out. Uh, John was out in the desert, man. He was out in the wilderness. And the Lord spoke to him there. All right. All right, so now, Isaiah 40 and 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahweh, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So hopefully that's understood now, why he was out in the desert. And make straight, meaning make his path straight. Get everybody prepared for the affliction to come and tell them the right way, you know, which is through repentance. And, and waiting on Yahweh Shai to, to make us perfect, not through the law, all right? Not through the revolution, meaning trying to fight the Roman Empire and crowning ourselves like the Galileans were doing. And not like the Pharisees, where you think you can make it through the law, but through the way which John was teaching, which is through true repentance and baptism and waiting for Yahweh Shai, all right? So, um, I want to keep going with this, but something else. I'm here you go. Check this out. It says uh, camel hair. Camel hair and heat regulation. All right. So I just typed in camel hair, and I was asking my spirit through the spirit last night, why was he wearing camel's hair in the spirit? And the Lord showed me. Camel's hair in the summer. I was thinking about heat, temperature. Then you got to think about the cold at night with the desert. So camel hair and heat regulation. 
Their hair strands have a unique hollow core that allows for the circulation of air and this medulla is the reason it is so good at regulating heat so he was out there in the desert not wearing oh man that's crazy he was a bad dude man depending on the climate conditions the air flowing in the hair the camel hair can both cool you and heat you making it perfect all year round mm, that dude was man listen he was official John was official I was hanging with him back then alright yeah as I said there's a lot I want to talk about so this is 45 minutes in so I'm going to close it in a second and um go further into this, this video that this this um false prophet put out from ISUPK man false teacher calling John Wicked saying he only wore hair, camel's hair because he was rough saying he went off and he must decrease because John was wicked and man listen the Lord getting tired of that man it's, it's about time and and I believe it's a spirit that's making these people um, still persecute the prophets even to this day they were the same ones that would have attempted to put these men to death they say that they're not but as the scripture you know there's a scripture about that we we would have built the graves for them but now really they're the ones that put up put us in the graves so they still hate John man but them talking about him forces us to talk about John in the correct way and, and understand his uh, his sacrifice that he did in the name of Yahweh Shai. all right um so now mark one and six no, five and they went out unto him all the land of Judea all right so even all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem. So everybody knew about John. They were all going out. They were getting his attention. You know, we don't have to go up to their churches and beat down their walls like we, um, like like ISU, IUIC is doing. You know, forcing it down their throat, trying to force feed it to them. The Lord, the Lord is gonna call his sheep. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair. Smart, man. Everybody else probably out there all hot. He had the camel's hair on, man. Equipped for his environment, just like us today. And with a girdle, of a skin about his loins so he had leather around his waist all right and he did eat locusts and wild honey so he was smart he was surviving healthy and preaching saying there cometh one mightier than i after me so he was being yo he was righteous man he was saying yo i'm not the one as it says in the book of john he's saying he's not that he's not the lord but I'm, I'm here to tell you about your house y'all showing up. The Pharisees weren't doing that. The Galileans weren't doing that yet. You know, a lot of them. They were focusing on trying to fight against the Roman Empire and then put crowns upon their heads. I'm going to go into that too. And calling themselves kings again. That's not the focus. The Lord was saying, no, we got to humble ourselves, seek the face of the Lord, and he'll heal our land. All right? And honor his son, Yahweh <laughs> Lest we perish from the way. That's what, that's what they were doing. They were not in the righteous way. All right? So, and they went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan confessing their sins and John was clothed with camel's hair smart dude smart man 
and with a girdle of skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey. See, they would call them wild, man. That's what you hear, I should be, be and all them uh, unlearned men saying he was wild, he was just rough. Man, I got, it seemed intelligent to me, like, like somebody from the military. And everybody respected him. And preaching saying, and preached saying, there cometh one mightier than I after me. Now you're talking about Yahushua. The latches, right, because uh, baptism of water, that can't really cleanse you. But the baptism of the Spirit, that's what's going to cleanse you. All right? The latches of his shoes, I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. See, a lot of, a lot of the people of our nation weren't saying that at that time. They were boasting themselves. But John was humble. I indeed have baptized you with water. And that's what we're here doing. We're saying Yahweh is, is the great one. We, we should worship him. And you got Sakari and them out there saying you're not supposed to worship Yahweh. You got ISUPK. They putting General Yohanna right up under Yahweh. They're not even teaching his name correctly. Uh, I, 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 C, you know? Now, it says this. I indeed baptize you with water. See, that's why he was saying he was greater. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass, right, which is water, right, the fire. And, it's, and it came to pass in those days that Yahweh Shai, not supposed to say Jesus right there, supposed to say Yahweh Shai, all right? Yahweh Shai came from Nazareth of Galilee. So he was a Galilean as well. And was baptized of John in the in Jordan. So if, if John was going off by baptizing, why would Yahweh Shai go get baptized? That's why I don't get. I'm trying to see where if they saying John was wicked, how? Cause I don't see it. You can look all throughout and comb through it over and over again. It's not there. He was in the spirit of prophecy. He knew about the truth. He was telling people to repent. And he baptized Yahweh Shai himself. And he he pointed him out. And Yahweh was dealing with him, and he walked according to the prophecy of himself, living out in the wilderness, crying out, preparing the way that Yahweh told him to, like he, like the Most High did with Moses. And out in the wilderness is where you would you would have character building. You know, you build your, your character was being built up. It said he he lived out there. Let me get that real quick. This is our first. This is Luke, one. In 76, and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. And talking about uh, John, all right? He was a prophet of the Most High. See, he's prophesying about Yahweh. He had the spirit of prophecy, man. So, how, anyway, for thou shalt go forth before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, man, to tell everybody to get right, you know, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of sin saying hey we gotta repent to be delivered from the destruction that's coming all right and that salvation is at the doors but a lot of jake didn't believe that at the time through the tender mercy of our power which is through grace that's what john's name represented yakanan grace through mercy whereby the day springs from on high have visited us. We've been watered in the dry places, man. See that? The day springs from on high have visited us. I mean, he, he's watered the dry places. And that's spiritual as well. All right? He's saying water in the desert. To give light to them that sit in darkness, man. See, just like being in the desert, we get water. In the darkness, we get light. That's what the Lord gave us the light at. As a light that shineth in the dark place. That's what, that's what John represented as well. And, the, and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. And the child grew, see, this is John, and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the deserts until the day of his showing unto Israel. And he was, he was Yahweh's cousin. So he didn't just move to the desert. He grew up out there under the Essenes. 
All right, y'all can not. That's why he was out in the wilderness. That's why he was wearing camel's head. He was born in that environment. Prepared for it. This is this was a very important man. You know, and that's my I just want everybody um to understand that these guys are disrespecting a great man, you know, when they talk about John that way. And uh they do so so we can come forth the men that uh, truly believe and speak the truth about um, uh, John's um, memorial. All right. So where was I? All right. So John was telling them, Mark one and six. Um, and seven, and preach saying. There cometh one mightier than I after me that the latchet of his shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Talking about Yahusha. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass in those days that Yahusha of Nazareth of Galilee, from uh, Yahusha came from Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. That's something, man. And that the waters of Jordan are real healthy too, from what I've, I've read. And straightway, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him, man. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit drive of him into the wilderness. And that's when Yahweh got up. And he was in the wilderness, that same wilderness, for uh, 40 days, man, being tempted of, of, of the devil. All right, so. All right, so I'm going to start wrapping it up here. Isaiah 40 and 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Say your power. Speak ye comfortably to Yerushalayim. And that's the same thing Yahweh did to John in the wilderness. All right. He told John to speak comfortably, comfort, comfortably to his people, start comforting them, because we were being persecuted by the Romans, persecuted by the Sanhedrin, which was the Sadducees and Pharisees, the government that was under the Roman Empire, the ruling government of Israel that can only call themselves priests, <laughs> couldn't call themselves kings because they would get destroyed by the Romans. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, see, the prophecies were fulfilled all the way up until Yahweh shot. And the way was prepared. And the foundation of salvation was laid. That her iniquity is pardoned. So the Lord pardoned us by sending the Yahweh shot. All right. Um, having a chance to wipe away our sins. You know. For as she hath received of Yahweh's hand double for all her sins. And you can read. Daniel chapter 9, the whole chapter to understand that to, when, it, when the iniquity was going to be accomplished from the destroying of the temple, from it being rebuilt then it being destroyed again de desecrated with the Roman Empire starting with Pompeii all the way up until 70 AD from 65 BC all the way up until 70 AD and really all the way up until the uh, battle of uh, Bar, uh, Bar Kokhba, I think it was, to the, basically to the first century AD. All right. Uh, um, all up until 311 AD. That's when the persecution really ended. So uh, so now let me end it here, man. It says, and cry unto, speak comfortably unto Jerusalem and cry unto her that her welfare is accomplished, man. That her iniquity is pardoned for she hath received of Yahweh's hand double for her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. See, that's how you know where, where, where the grace period is coming in. So the foundation was laid with, uh, with Yahweh Shai and the forerunner, forerunner, the introduction, the voice, the trumpet was John. So now we're in the time of receiving the reward of that foundation 2,000 years ago. This is it. 
So he's going to send John again in that same spirit to be the forerunner for Yahweh Shah once again. All right? But Yahweh Shah is not going to return like he did last time, being born from a child, coming from Galilee. He's coming from the heavens. All right? John set up to prepare us through the spirit once again in these times and started with Alba Bibbins make his path straight and that takes time it took time back then as a light that grew up all into the day of the bright day just like it takes some time for the sun to rise and the darkness to scatter it takes time for us to for the truth to be clarified all up to the clear point which I believe the pureness that laid upon the apostle to her and up to the umbrella up under him which would be the rest of the elect men in this truth to have our job in clarifying you know that's what we're here for so that's that's what we're doing man carrying on that that echo of that voice from the wilderness all right every valley shall be exalted and every mountain shall be made and hills shall be made low so all the low places where we were at we're being exalted in the spirit you know lifted up but all the governments and the high priest and all that and the rich people they, they, they're they the ones that the Lord was like no I'm not dealing with them so they were being humbled by Yahweh Shai who cutting them and the crooked shall be made straight man all right, all the false doctrines, the Lord, like, no, I'm, I'm gonna come, He's gonna show you what it is. Yahweh came to tell us that. And the rough places, plain, all right, make plain meaning pure, all right, and, and uh, oh, in this sense, I think plain meaning smooth, all right. So the rough place is gonna be smooth, man, it's gonna be smoothed out. So basically, ironing our, our differences between the children of Israel and Yahweh. And the glory of Yahweh shall be revealed, all right, and all flesh shall see it together and revealed because Yahweh Shai and John was right there pointing Yahweh Shai out saying that's him. Just like today, John was here through our Bevan saying Yahweh Shai is the one. It's a story that they use against our Bevan, but the fact is they still told the story the story goes like this, that Abba Ben was in his kitchen and a man was in his kitchen. He turned around, there was a man standing there that had a white woolly beard and white hair. He had a green robe on. He didn't say garment, he said a robe. And he sat there and told Abba Bibbins how to deal, deal with the Hebrew correctly. Whew. I believe that story, man, me personally. I have, I've had experiences like that, you know, not seeing physically, but experience in that type of way all right so now let's continue man wrap this one up and all the grass so like where was it at for the mouth of Yahweh have spoken it man all right and that's just it man so the voice of the one crying in the wilderness um is John that he lived out that prophecy just, you know and he was reading from the book of Isaiah as I read for you in Luke earlier. And why was he in the wilderness? Um, because he was born there. So he was raised up until he was revealed, revealed to the uh, people. The, the grace period was being revealed and the introduction of Yahweh Shai was coming. That's what John represented, man. He had the spirit of truth, spirit of prophecy, and he listened and followed all the orders of Yahweh, even with the repentance and the baptism. Yahweh Shai being baptized himself by John. And he said, I must decrease, he must increase, meaning I'm done with my part of the work. Now he's going to continue on. That's what that means. So he was out in the wilderness, not because he was wild or just rough. And he had a camel's hair because he was smart. All right. So with that, I'm going to end it there. And Yahweh Ratazah, we can continue this later to focus on John, the voice of the one that cried from the wilderness. But um, later I want to get into the point that they say John was wicked.
see about that. All right, so they say, Yahweh by Hashem, Kahalayim, like Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Harukah Kudash, my mom. All right, double line to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. That's why I say that. People like Abba Bivens and Elder Yaqwa and King Masha, you know. So with that, and uh, Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwatim and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. And we're going to keep defending the name of John and all the prophets of old, man. That these people try to disrespect uh, Demon Napa, the that they call Sister Napa, the, um, I, the Lie SUPK, with General Gehenna, Yahana, which was basically an Arabic name. They keep disrespecting John. So we're here to defend his name in the spirit of truth. <laughs>